what's up what's up what's up everybody welcome back to another episode of the format podcast this won't be a long one just wanted to uh give some thoughts on a recent development um nba commissioner adam silver is considering changing the format for the all nba team selections now this one is interesting to me because as you know i came up in a different era of basketball where things were a lot more defined let's say all right so i'll get to that in a second let me go ahead and read some uh read something to you okay um nba reporter tim bon Tomps tweeted adam silver says that a fair amount of consideration is going into changing an all nba to a positionless ballot the current system may result in some inequities referring to Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid being unable to both be on the first team. Now, what is that talking about? That's talking about this past season, this past regular season's uh, votes, where basically uh, Nikola Jokic beat out Joel Embiid for, both for the MVP as well as the uh, first team All-NBA selection. Now, when Adam Silver talks about going to uh, positionless voting, you always hear the the modern NBA talking about positionless basketball in terms of not defining most players to one particular position. When I was growing up, you had point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. Now, in the modern NBA, for the most part, the power forward's been eliminated. Most of them just play like big, small forwards, and same with most of the centers, right? You have a few true centers, uh, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Rudy Gobert, uh, Carl Anthony Towns. But even those guys, their offensive skill sets, they're on the perimeter so much that they don't even play like true centers anymore, right? Joel Embiid is a guy who has such a great back to the basket game, a legitimate post game, which you almost never see anymore. There's no one in the modern day NBA who can defend him, but he prefers to play in the mid range and shoot threes. You've seen him since Doc Rivers arrived in Philadelphia playing on the lower block a lot more, but still he spends the majority of his time out further than you would have seen him in past iterations and past eras of NBA basketball. You look at a guy like Nikola Jokic, obviously we know what he can do. His ability to pass, shoot, run the offense. He's literally a point center. And uh, that's something we've never really seen before. Obviously, we saw Magic back in the day as a 6'9 point guard, the the true um, embodiment of a big who could run the offense and run point. But still, it's not like Jokic. This is a totally different animal. So anyway, <clears throat> and by the way, when I say totally different animal, I am not at all insinuating that Nikola Jokic is better than Magic Johnson. That would be utterly ridiculous. And I would not dare open my mouth to utter such blasphemy. Anyway. Um, what we're looking at is, is the possibility going forward of, again, a positionless vote for all NBA selections, which instead of going, you know, a center, two forwards and two guards, or even, you know, three front court, two back court players, what you would move to is the possibility that he mentioned, and this is not set in stone, but it was mentioned that you move to the possibility of just having the 15 quote unquote best players in the league. I'm totally against this. Let me tell you why I'm against this. Number one, how can we define who's the 15 best players in the league when we don't have standardized criteria for anything, right? So if, if you were to move to this model, would it force the NBA to create standardized criteria for these selections and how the voters are selecting these players? Probably not, because a big thing the NBA loves is not having standardized criteria so that people can talk about this, right? whether it's the uh, the TV shows, the sports debate shows, whether it's writers and columnists and all that, right? Whether it's uh, people, fans in the barbershops or wherever. The whole point of not having the criteria, I believe, is to have people talking, debating, and really, you know, keeping the NBA on people's lips, right? So I've always been a proponent of having standardized criteria. That probably comes from the military in me, right? If you have standardized criteria, then there's no question about how people are in the positions that they are in. You can still maybe disagree, but if you say, you know, okay, you got to average set amount of this or set amount of that, and you have to achieve these benchmarks, et cetera, et cetera, it makes it pretty easy to say, okay, well, this person earned an all NBA nod. Cool. So yeah. Um, how do you go about selecting the quote unquote 15 best players in the league and you have no standardized criteria? Then what happens? We, we see how the game is changing. What happens if the 15 best players in the league are all perimeter players? So, you know, guards and maybe small forwards, like 
that's ridiculous. At that point, are we going to punish a player who happened to be born 7-1 or 7-2 just because of the size they were born, right? That's not something they can control. They were born a big. So now you punish them for that and they don't get an all NBA nod because you believe that because of the way the game is played today, quote unquote, positionless basketball, all the best players are guards and wings. Like, that's not cool. All right. Another reason I disagree with this, you're going to be costing people money, right? We know that the big, especially the traditional back to the basket big has lost so much of its importance in the modern game, right? And there's a lot of things tied to, you know, how people perform, et cetera, right? When you look at all NBA selections, whether it's first, second, or third, that literally affects whether or not a player um, can get a super max contract, right? All, all that verbiage is written in. If you achieve these benchmarks, this allows you to get paid commensurate with those benchmarks you've achieved. So now I'm a seven foot player. I'm a dominant low post guy, but I need a guard to get me the ball. In a modern day NBA, most point guards don't know how to make a post entry pass. The analytics will tell you that the back to the basket uh, post up is the worst shot in basketball, right? So you have all these things. I can't get the ball because the guard won't give it to me. I can't get the ball because I happen to be a seven footer with a dominant low post game, but the coach I have doesn't want to doesn't want to allow me to dominate the way I'm capable of dominating. The analytics are telling the owner and the GM and the coach don't give me the ball on the low block. All these are things that I can't control. Right. But because of that. And now you're going to change the way the all NBA voting is done. Right. I don't even have an opportunity to get what I could be getting simply because I was born at seven feet tall. Like, I really don't agree with that. I, I, I think it's terrible, right? I really do. I am so against the, the prospect of um, the, the NBA, all NBA voting going to uh, the top quote unquote 15 players. I think that's just, I think that's terrible, right? Especially with the, the modern game's insistence on going away from true bigs and playing everything, you know, in, in the fast pace and space game. And, and not giving them an opportunity to shine when this game was made for them, right? Think about this. If you're Joel Embiid and you go play on the block, who in the modern day NBA can really defend you? Rudy Gobert? It's probably about it. And he probably can't, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Because Joel Embiid has a myriad of low post moves. He has tremendous ability down on that block. There's nobody who can defend him in this NBA. But Number one, he hasn't been trained to consistently go down there, bang and dominate. That's not the era that he came up in. And number two, he doesn't have a coach or coaches that are designing play schemes and, and offensive systems around him getting busy down there. So what's he doing? Playing more from the mid range and even shooting a lot of threes. Not a good look. Now, I'm not against that being a weapon or a tool in his toolkit, being able to step out and knock down the three or being able to step out and knock down the mid range. We saw guys like Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, dominant in the mid range game. But these were also guys that could go down there, get on the low block, put their hand up, get the ball and get you a bucket or a foul or both. Joel Embiid, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to want to be that guy. He's capable of being that guy. He doesn't want to be that guy. So, you know, I look at it and I think this is just this is a terrible idea Go ahead, going and uh, changing. Now, it hasn't happened yet. It's something they're exploring. But I truly hope that this is not a situation that they that they move towards in terms of uh, all NBA players being selected based on being the quote unquote top 15 players. And when we say top 15, that's first, second and third team all NBA. Instead of doing that, I truly believe they at least need to keep it three front court two back court. If it was me, I would say, you know, center, two forwards and two guards. But, you know, again, the center position is kind of being moved out and the NBA and the modern fan seems to want it that way. You got to please the fans if you're the league, um, even though the brand of basketball being played is not necessarily the best brand of basketball we've ever seen. But that's something for another day anyway. Um, that's all I got to say on this topic. Told you this would be a quick one. Appreciate it. Uh, you know what to do. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button in the lower right corner of your screen. Click the notification bell so you can be notified when new episodes come out. 
if you want the audio only version of the podcast, you can find us wherever you get your audio podcast. And if your platform allows it, please go ahead and give us that five star review. Also, whether it's YouTube or your audio podcast platform or wherever you're watching, listening, please go ahead and leave us a comment. Helps us move up in the algorithm so more people can find us. And of course, with more people finding us, if you enjoyed the show, click that like button and make sure you share it with other people you know that love good sports talk. All right. That's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I'm out. Peace.